you're touching here, you got two inches over there. It was literally touching that bar. Hey, good morning and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm Tony, if you're new to the channel, and this is Tony's Tractor Adventure. But we got a special guest here today. We got Brock from Rock Hill Farms, and we are going to cut up some big oaks on a sawmill. He's got a lot of questions about sawmills. We've been talking for the last uh, few months, like six, eight months about the sawmill. I said, come on up, we're gonna, we'll show you everything we know. Shouldn't take no more than 10 minutes. Yeah, this is, Tony's got one of my favorite channels to watch and I'm excited to be here and maybe learn a little something from this guy. He's got kind of low standards, you know. <laughs> Listen, let's get to it. Yep, should be fun. So what I'm doing, Brock, is we're getting ready to build our greenhouse and you've seen some of the other projects we've done in the past. And I think that will be a good chance to like bring you up to speed with what I know on, on the sawmill. We're gonna need some big six by six posts. Now our sawmill is the OS 23 by Frontier. Uh, it'll cut, it's rated at a 23 inch log round and it'll actually cut 20 inches across flat. But I have learned if you're patient and willing to, you know, be patient and move the log, you can get a log as big as 26 inches on there. It's hard and I, I don't recommend doing it, but you can do it if you need to. All these oak logs? Yeah, yeah this is all separated by. So these are all oak and I got some uh, black cherry over there. There is a one big oak over there. There's a couple, this is a mixture of poplar and oak over here. So this, this log right here is, this is a uh, white oak, and which is really good for post. It's 21 inches this way, and it's gonna be about 18 inches that way. On this end, let's see if we got any taper. It's got some big knots on it, and these knots sticking off where these are like old broken limbs, that, that can come into play with your saw. So about 19 this way, to 17. So there's, a, there's about an inch taper, which, means we can we could stack a, a piece of wood up under this end to level it out but it's just not really that big a deal but you want to what I, I i always want to try to go cut the pith out of the of the board because it, that center piece is going to be worthless so, base, basically and you want that center piece to be on the same board on both right ends. yeah we, yeah we want to try to keep the pith all the way through and, and you can cut the pith into a like a six foot six and it, it'll hold up as a fence post you know yeah. so you, we don't want to waste it but we really want a good six by sixes on the outside, and I think we can get at least two, maybe three, really good six by sixes out of this if we, if we, if we play our cards right, which I'm, I'm known for not doing. Right. So you're going to try to get that bottom one off the stack. Yeah, we're just going to pull it out and let everything else fall down. I tell you, that sounds like a tractor adventure right there. <laughs> it is a tractor adventure. That weren't too bad. It wasn't ter I terribly. Said you looked like you'd done that before. Once or four times. So what we got here is these are a brand new set of uh, saber tooth ten degree blades. So I've I've done a lot of oak recently on a seven degree blade by Woodmiser. It's a, a Turbo Seven silver tip and. Um, I had a an, another order of these saber tips, uh, saber tooth blades from Frontier come in. So I want to try the 10 degree blades with the oak. It's a little bit more aggressive. I uh, say so. Yeah, to back up, um, 
the lower the number on that, the more aggressive it cuts or? Yes. Okay. So I, I wasn't familiar with the, the fact that there's a difference in the, the angle of the teeth or anything. Yeah, there, there's a difference in the angle of the teeth and uh, the angle that it cuts. So it's, it's literally which direction the bottom part of this the hook, that, that's your degree right there. So the 10 degrees is a little bit further over, the 7 degrees is a little more straight up. And I'm no expert, obviously, but the, like in your hardwoods, it's said that uh, the 7 degrees are better. Uh, and you get into softwoods, your 10 degrees is going to be better. However, I was talking with a guy on a forum the other day, and he said, try, try one of these 10 degrees. I think you'll be happier with it. And it, he said it'll cut through faster. And, and with, with, with the extra horsepower we have now, I don't think you know we, we it's going to be a big deal. So here's a lesson, a, a well a lesson well learned, mm -hmm. is uh, you can. There's guys that will take and whip those things around, and I ain't one of those because I always bleed. Right. And I would be much smarter to have gloves on. Yep. But I don't. I don't like wear. I don't like working in gloves. Never have. I'm the same way. And sometimes it comes back to bite you, literally. Literally, yes. We had to get rid of the frontier of the mouse. We had a mouse living in here, hmm. and uh, we had we had to get rid of him. He had to go. He got an eviction notice. Thirty days. He had to go. we did yesterday we come back out here and cleaned up uh, up under this we carried this and washed it the other day we, we took it to the, to the car wash and washed it. it's been sitting out here for a year without any any kind of cleaning so we went and went ahead and cleaned it up and uh, I'm, I'm glad we did that because after I come through I, there was a, like a boat loose here you know it vibrates you got it's just like your tractors anything you got to come back and do your maintenance on it mm -hmm. you cleaning them is all best way to find something that's wrong or needs a little bit of right. attention yeah and i just never even thought about you know that boat had vibrated loose I mean, what's the odds of that so on the sawmill okay there's a the way frontier does it and every every sawmill manufacturer has some some similar thing so the way they do they have a, a callip like a spring that's been they know exactly how much tension that spring will put on if you turn this thing five times once you touch it so there's a flat spot here you'll start turning it and then when you'll feel it touch the spring so when it touches the spring, that's when you start. So there's half, one, half, two, half, three, half, four, half, five. So that's enough tension. So it's pretty simple in that respect. And this belt, see how it, it bulges out there? Mm-hmm. That's normal. Okay, yeah, it looks like a problem. Yeah, yeah, everybody says know. that. It's like, that's, something's wrong with No, that's the way that it works. And now as it gets warmer, it'll get much more flexible and it'll actually stay further down in there, but that's absolutely normal. And all I'm doing now is looking to make sure my tracking is good. So I just put that new blade on there. I want to spin this over, you know, 15 times, I'd say, because I want to make sure that it's tracking the way it's going to track. And you want the, basically the, the gullet of the, of the cut right here. I think that's what you call that. Mm -hmm. You want that to be pretty much dead even with the outside of this pulley. And then that leaves all your, teeth, your cutters are completely exposed and on both sides so this 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 the sawmill is really good about tracking I've, uh, and as long as you use a reputable blade manufacturer and they they do it to the right length i've i've had to like adjust make an adjustment on this like one time out of all the time all my blades have come in just spot on can't beat that no now i did i did add a high a high uh speed dust collection system I mean, we, we're, we're collecting our sawdust for, for the garden. And uh, yeah, I, I studied on it for pretty much a week or so and put one single screw here and put a bucket under it. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a slow hey, learner. A lot of times the simplest solution is the best one. Yeah. And it has a safety switch on here too. Like if, uh, if you leave these, leave these loose and the door comes open a little bit, it'll shut the engine off. So even when we put the upgrade the engine in there, we went ahead and uh, made sure that it's wired correctly. If you hit the, if you hit the emergency stop, it will, it stops. So I'm going to real quickly check the oil. I 
one thing I'll just go ahead and say now, uh, when you're, like when you're, when you get a sawmill, you just, when you're done at the end of the day, always loosen this cable up. I hear a lot of people like, well, my cable broke, my cable broke. Well, they leave their, the weight of the head setting for days and weeks and months. We, we lubricate this regularly. And we, when we put it away at the end of the day, we release all the pressure off of the bandsaw spring. And then we release all the pressure off of this. I've never had it fail. I'm gonna watch it fall off today because I said that. <laughs> all right. Oh, well, that sounds like it, it makes sense. Challenge accepted. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's get a little oil checking going on. Huh? Uh, if, to this point, there's not even a a, a cable burr. It's got, it's got the clear stuff in there. That's good. I run a. Uh, this has got three oil changes on this new engine, and I'm running. I'm running full synthetic. Did you see how clear it was? Yeah. Let water. So, do you have a use for the sawdust, or you just compost it? We're throwing it in the garden. If you look up on our, our garden up here, this, they pushed all the topsoil off up there. So we, we've been taking it in this and going up there and dumping it and spreading it out. I'm gonna till it all in and throw a bunch of nitrogen on it and let it, help it decay faster. And that's what we're gonna use for our flower beds. Yeah, anything, you know, we're gonna have all these little, yeah, it's, there'll be a lot of, any raised bed flower beds, she can put that as a fill. Cause you know, just these logs we're getting ready to do, we'll make a, we'll make a whole, it takes a lot. It's a lot of sawdust. I've twisted that chain so many times. So now we're getting ready to set the log on here. This is not that long of a log. It's a little over 10 foot long. So we're going to I tend to like to work in the middle of the sawmill. I don't know why, but put our backstops up. I only also, I generally work off two backstops instead okay. of, you know, because I find that with multiple backstops, there's more room for error. Because and, and there, there's, there's always gonna be some slight deviation between this backstop, this backstop and that, that backstop. So if I just work off of two backstops, then it's a straight line and I don't have to. Yeah, that makes sense. I wouldn't have thought of it, but it makes sense. Well, I mean this, it, you want a sawmill like this, it's, it is a rough cut saw. Sawmill. I mean, it's, it's good. I mean, it's really, it does really, it's really accurate. But at the end of the day, it's still, it's not, it's not plain wood. It's, it's a, it's a rough cut sawmill. Mm -hmm. And I'd say like, if you think about like, oh, the old days of the big circular saws and the sawmills, this is way far more accurate than those are. When I was a kid, my grandpa had one with the big circular blade. I remember it a little bit. Yeah, that's how I got in the, my uncle was, he, run, he, he cut timber and he took me to the sawmill when I was about 13. And we saw, I seen one of those big sawmills and I've had the, I've had the sawmill bug ever since. I was like, I just, something about taking and making something out of a log just, just it's in my soul. Yep. All right, so now we're gonna set that up on there. Sometimes I, I get sidetracked, but I walk up it from the from the side, and then you know make sure I get my hand on it so I can. Because generally, I mean, if it's just teetering, you can hold it. But once it starts going, you're not stopping two thousand pounds. It's coming. Right. And there goes the ankles, knees, and I had everything put away for the carrying it to the car wash of the day. I'm trying to give you my best impression, man. I'm first impressions are tough, you know. Like that's the dirtiest my tractor's been in forever. So we're gonna have a problem here because this is such a big log. So you, again, you, you you have to be patient with it, but you've gotta like get by these. That, mm -hmm. that this, this inside right here, basically this nut, this portion right here, uh, it, it, you've got to make sure that it's gonna clear the track on the inside here. Yeah, it kind of looks like right now it's close. It's close, and what I'm gonna do is go ahead and, and, and screw this in and so it's gonna go in further. 
obviously, but uh, how are we looking on that side? Are we touching them? It was touching when you set it down. Yeah, yeah I think we're fine. Perfect, yeah. I mean, sometimes you can only get one. These first cuts are on big logs like this, these first cuts. This is really kind of close to the max of the sawmill. Yeah. Like, so you can be really patient with it and come by and take little slices off the top and then turn it over and take little slices and just keep, you know, you can like make a stop sign out of it. And, but it's, it's very time consuming and sometimes so, so frustrating you don't want to. Yeah, but, and that explains why there's a difference between the maximum cut width and the maximum board, yeah, right. maximum log size. So. Yeah. So we get, like I said, 20 inches, 20 inch board. If we're really willing to work with it in the center, we can, I've, I've got 23 inch boards. So it, you can do it. But they don't rate it that way because it's just not realistic to try to do all the time. But that's just one of the reasons, like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're probably gonna upgrade to a bigger sawmill. That's another thing that you need to, you know, when you're doing your sawmill journey. My concern, as pro probably what you were about to say, is finding a spot where you want bigger capacity, but as soon as you start going up in capacity, you start going up in price too, and it's kind of a personal use mill. Right, so. yeah, it's definitely, this is definitely a homeowner's mill, uh, a homesteader's mill. Uh, you know, you, you go into the, the, the kind that turn the, turn the logs over by themselves. You're, you're in a totally different price range. I mean, you're talking about, uh, we're, we're in this, you can get into this sawmill from start. And I don't want to, I don't never talk about prices, but you can get into this sawmill very economically and it'll pay for itself very quickly if you don't mind the hard work. But if you want an automated production sawmill, yeah, you're going to have to pay a lot more. It, it's, in, it's, it's a difference. It's a big difference. But uh, still, even in these type of economical sawmills, they have different sizes. We, we evaluated the trees on our property. We evaluated the trees in our surrounding community that we thought we would get. Well, it turned out that ain't how it works. We, I, we have come across so many big trees that we have turned away, like red oak, white oak trees, just hickory, big giant trees that we just turned away because we couldn't put them on our sawmill. So have it, having it to do over today, Depending on where you're at, like this is a great sawmill for say in Canada where they have the spruce and they're long, skinny, you know, they're, you know, big long logs this, this long. But uh, for us and our, our types of trees now, I probably should have went with the, the 31, 27 or the 31. And those are not that much more expensive. You know, they still work the same way. They're still a full manual mill. And in, but you know, as long as you have tractor and tractor hydraulics, you can you can get around that and keep your, your grapple here. You got to keep your grapple here, right? So you see how easy. I mean, uh, if you guys don't know, we were our last log. I had we had the grapple over at, the, at our other house with our other tractor, and I was working with the, with the forks. And this is so much more precise. I can set and turn and twist and move the log around. And it's basically like having a high end log, or having a high end sawmill because I can do all that with the tractor hydraulics. So that plays multiple roles. We have a lot of 36 inch diameter trees. Yes, yeah, big. 30, 36, nothing, hardly on my property is less than 30. And so, and I'm not gonna cut all those down. I think I have another source for logs, but the skid loader can actually handle a log that's long enough to be worth milling at that diameter. Our smaller tractor can, could, I could, with the backhoe on our smaller tractor, I could probably put this up here. It'll, it'll, it'll pull out something it's like 20, 2,500 pounds that are deadlift, so say from ground to this high. Now it won't lift it all the way to the full height, but that's where the big tractor does come into play here for us too. So it, it's moving these big logs around in the woods. It, the, 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 the smaller tractor is just really not an option, but it's great for yard work here. A little safety note here, um, this horse pyre is pretty, um, it's, it's high. And so therefore the blade, it never slows down enough. Even at low idle, it doesn't slow down enough to keep this, the, the blade will keep moving all the time where it should, when it's in original configuration, it would stop. But the, we just got more power. It's a hot rod, man, I'm telling you. So here, uh, the blue line is, is gonna give, it's in correlation to how high the, the blade is from the bunk, the top of these bunks. And that's all it'll ever be. So sometimes you'll work, you'll be working from the, the bunk side 
for, for spacing. But most of the times you'll be working from the top of the log down. So it's not going to necessarily be perfectly the perfect inch from the, the top of the bunk. So what you do is you say we want to move this to this, this red line is, is adjustable. So you can move this up and down. And let's say we're gonna, we want to we cut uh, three quarters. So we're just going to move the red line down over the three. So that's three, that's three quarters. So every, we'll, the next time we cut, we'll, move, we'll drop the sawmill down. We'll just go down to the next three. And that takes into account the thickness of the blade. So every time that you cut, you lose, you lose a, a, an eighth of an inch roughly. So if you want, let's say you want a one inch board, well then you would use four quarters. And then you want a two inch board, you would use the, the, the eight quarters. Because each time that you make a cut, you're losing one eighth of an inch of log for the blade width. So that this automatically takes into account that. I'm good. Y'all agree? Anybody don't agree? Leave a comment. Yeah. Well, it's good that it factors that in for you. Yeah, and it really is, and it's, so, it's it took me a while to, to start using it and trusting it, but it really is accurate. So the first thing you're going to do when you start with this log is is just remove the this down to a flat edge. Right. We're going to cut the first. The first one we're going to cut is is down the top, and and then what I've learned on a, on this manual sawmill is it's more important to get that first cut and then square that first cut up to the back because you're rolling this thing over sometimes manually. Where if you have an automatic mill, you might cut the top, rotate it 180 degrees, cut the bottom, and then rotate it and cut one side and for, for, for reasons that you might get a little bit more yield out of the log. When you're running a manual sawmill, you're, not as, you're willing to give up a little yield because uh, so it's so, so hard work. So you're gonna cut one side, rotate it over against the back, get a square corner, and then you can rotate it over and then do away with your back bunks altogether, or your back, your back stops, because there's little, there's little one inch stops back, or three quarter inch stops. So you just slide that square cant into the back of it, and you know it's true. But, you know, it's, it's trade-offs with a manual mill. You know, you'll do things on a manual mill that you wouldn't do on an on a automated mill. Yep. Yeah, I know uh, turning it with that cant doesn't look any fun when I watch you do it. Yes, and I, again, that's why I'm, I'm a big believer in having the hydraulics of the tractor and having a, having a if you're going to do this, I, I, I really like, it depending on your wood too. Like if you're, like you, let's say you're using, you're doing 20 foot spruce. They're, they're light, they're narrow, they're not, yeah, you can, that's okay. You start messing with 2,000 pound plus oak logs, you need hydraulics to help you out. Now. There's other options too. Now, uh, Frontier has a, a, a thing that you can stick in the back and it has a little crane on it or a little uh, winch on it and you, you hooks on and you can use it. You can just wind it and pull it around and it, you're on the back side and you're safe. And that's definitely an option, uh, but we have the hydraulics of the tractor, so that's why, that's why we do it the way we do it. Yep. Yeah, the one time I did it, we used a strap around it and we put the knot of the strap down here and, and pulled up to turn it. Yeah. Now I've seen people do that where they'll take that just to, like a, they don't have a grapple and they'll just take the bucket and a chain and just hook up under it and then rotate it around. Now, there's, a, there's a lot of ways to save your back because as we get older, we gotta, we gotta think about those kind of things. I do for sure. All right, let's get this thing cranked up and get, get some video making. A lot of water. Water and soap sometimes work, like you're going to cut southern yellow pine, it's very sticky, it's got a lot of pitch to it. It's very difficult for this, this meal to work, this just gums up everything and you got to come in and clean it all out. Um, but with uh, with oak and a hardwood like poplar and stuff like that, I don't, it's pretty, pretty easy, not very much mess. You just don't open it up very far, huh? You just don't open yeah, it up very just, far. Yeah, just a little bit, I mean actually you can cut without it. I mean, a lot of people cut dry. I think it might help with your the blade longevity because it's going to keep your blade cool. And when you, when you cut, you want to always do it from the back. I'll, I'll step out of here and you can look down through there because if you're a sawyer, you are a sawyer that will hit your backstop or have hit your backstop. There is no in between. You will at some point cut into your backstop. But I, creating good habits like leaning over and looking down through there to make sure it's not going to hit anything. You know, it, yeah. it, it needs to be a repetitive motion. I've only hit it one time. 
and it, it destroyed a brand new blade. That's 30 bucks out the door. And, and destroyed a backstop. So you're wanting to take off just a little bit at the lowest point of the log where it has a dip? Is that what you're looking at or no? It just totally depends on what you're trying to get. So if you're trying to get the most yield, or you're trying to get something done, like I need, I need, I need six by sixes. So I will take a pretty good cut through the first one to get down to the actual what I need to use. Um, these outer, if you, if I cut this, these outer boards, because of the way the the grain is going, if I just cut this all in little one inch boards, uh, because of the the, the the way the grain is, they'll cut and be unless you have a kiln and you weigh it down and dry it. They'll they'll cup up like you just stack them out here in the woods. Uh, they're really those those cuts are really bad. About your best cuts, like if you're looking for like boards, is quarter saw or, or uh, basically what, what we can do is quarter saw here, and uh, you, you keep turning the log over and cut a quarter of it off, and you keep turning that over and getting your the best cuts that are the most stable. So there's definitely what you're looking for if you're looking for completely stable wood. You need to read the grain. So, if we wanted a perfectly stable log or a stable board, we would want to cut straight down. So we would we want to cut across the middle. And the closer those grains are to a 45 degree grain is pretty strong. But if you can get them straight up and down to the border, because you're looking into the, the border, if you can get the grain straight up and down, that's where it's the most stable. But if like any. I consider quarter sawn anything from like 45 degrees to, to 90. That, that's going to be your most stable. Well, we're looking for big posts, and and we we are understanding that these posts are going to have some warping, and we're kind of looking for that. We want that rustic look. I think I'm going to jump up there at about 17. I belt on it. I don't think I tied it down good enough. Right there, I adjusted the bed height yesterday. And that one post is picking up. See right there, right here. Oh yeah, right there. Yeah. I leveled the bed height yesterday, and I got it too low. It's always something. Well, and also the belt's too loose, which is. Which is common. No, I just yesterday when I adjusted that out, I got that. Um... Took my bucket off. I forgot to put my bucket back on. That shouldn't be too bad. Now, I, I try to smell you know. I try to uh, you know always crank this up one. If if you don't, you'll what, what I call an unscheduled blade uh, blade dump. Yeah, because it will come off, and once you, when it comes off, you're you're pretty much guaranteed to lose about five or six of your teeth. And when you see this next cut, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna go ahead and make another another cut. And I, now that I got it all kind of tuned in, 
we'll, we'll, I'm going to try to keep a steady pace going and you'll see how much smoother this next cut's going to be. Okay. I never get mad at you. Except on every day of the week. Yeah. I had them up there for like six months sitting directly on the ground. And then I brought them back here and stacked them. Cause... Right. Just like I said earlier, drop it down to your blade touching, right? Okay. Then you're going to adjust this out. The four. We'll, we'll cut a one inch corner. We'll just go down to the. You just gotta make sure that you don't get confused. I've I, I got it messed up, you know. You'll see the let's turn this one over okay hey look the, how the so the cut's a lot better i was very cautious about going the same speed i will say this already i know already the sevens are much better the seven seven degree blades oh yeah 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 this i can tell the their cut the seven degree blades cut this oak a lot quicker and easier it's a lot smoother too you can see the little ripples here it's nothing bad i mean it's nothing to be ashamed of at all but the seven degrees are definitely the way to go with oak. Yep. The, oh yeah, this will be great for what it's what it's been yeah, be it, used for. When it dries out, uh, and then you run it through a planer, it's gonna be awesome. So these leftover boards here will run into a lot of this too if you get a sawmill. You, sometimes you can give them away. Sometimes you you know if you're really doing a lot of firewood, you can cut them up with firewood. But for us, we just don't need them, and we got a guy that comes and gets some of them. But we end up burning a bunch of this stuff because yeah. if you don't, you're just going to end up like waiting for somebody to come get it. You'll end up, end up with truckloads of this stuff sitting around. The guy I talked to recently that runs a sawmill is um, he sells this for ten dollars a load, but he says he's got more in it than ten dollars. Right. But he doesn't want to waste it, and some people will use it if they don't want to pay for good firewood. Basically. Well, I mean, it would be good firewood, but it also too. This is our this is our personal residence. So how many people do you really want coming out here? Yeah. So this, that that's another another thing, another factor. We got people that we know and trust, and 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 they're welcome to all this stuff. But sometimes they may not be able to get to it for two or three weeks. And we're always gonna have more. Yep. How far off are we? Two inches. Now you're six inches back. How straight are we? It's still got quite a bit of curl back on it. Keep going, keep going. Come in. I think it's gonna, you're four inches off of these stops. Okay. Am I hitting the stops? You're, the top of the log is touching, the bottom's not. Okay. So. Is that better? Yeah. It's, uh, we can keep bumping it with the trencher. We're not too bad. Yeah, so we'll, we'll use some of that leverage that we can move the world with. Or not? This is a big old log, brother. Yeah. But we'll, the, our biggest problem is this right here. 
Jane's not cut it off. And and the cheap seats. Yeah. yeah, as you were doing it, I thought that's probably as close as you're going to get it. Yeah, we, it's got, see, this one of those, this is the cut that has to be. Yeah. It can't not be. I'm, I'm just going to take the the grapple and bump it over. Push it in on the bottom? Yeah. I don't like pushing it with a tractor because, especially this tractor strong enough, it literally can just knock the whole thing over. Touching the stop on this side, but not that side. You're touching here, you got two inches over there. You're there. Yeah, you've got like a half an inch or less gap at the bottom, but. Okay. Yeah. That's better than it Yep. This is these first cuts right here are the hardest ones for sure. And you almost need something that you can leverage in with like a crank handle or something. Yeah, I mean they they actually it, make some stuff you can do, but you know, you, you know you factor that. That cost in. Sometimes you just gotta fight it, huh? It's just a little gap, but not bad. It's probably that, it's that enough, knob down there. It's, a, it's enough for sure. There it went. There it went. Okay. It's close. I think we can. This one needs to stick in and just the end. Don't push it in the middle, but just push the end of it. Yeah, I think it'll tighten up. Yeah, as you, as you were pulling there, it was pushing away over here. It was pivoting on that knot. We have to try to get a low bite here and push at the bottom. But that definitely, I think, should get us a good, a good can. And we're 16 and a half inches off of the deck. We're 16 and a half inches off the deck, so we should get at least two good usable six by six out of it, and then uh, some extra boards, some other usable, maybe a maybe a four by six out of it. take one more inch off if you had two cans it would, I could help you more yeah I mean I've got I was, an, another one but it, it you know I'm used to working by myself pretty much so it's I always call it a can because once I get a good bite on it I can't lift it yeah PV can't I get so many uh, there's, a, there's an ongoing battle of what each one of these are if it's a sharp point it's supposed to think it's a PV and if it's Oh, yeah. If it's, if it's different, like the a groove like this, or a little, little hammer on the end, it's a it's a it's a cant hook. They call it a PV, and they make it, so I'm hmm. gonna call it a PV. Little punky on the outside there. Okay. 
And we're square on it. Yep. There's a little bit of debris in between the log and the stop over there. But. That's it. You can tight. Yeah, is it over that one? No, it's, that's what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, it's over on this little bit. That's what that one's got to come back for this one to go in. Yeah, that, I didn't, I didn't, there's a little bit of wane right there. I didn't see it. Yeah, we're touching here. I should have took that inch, but it'd be okay. Um, you can clamp this in. In my experience, when it's this heavy, you're not moving it. Okay. This is why you should bring the chainsaw with you too. Yeah. I can I could see that if you could dry that in the kiln, clear coat it, that'd be something neat. Yeah, I thought that might be for the Tanya pile. It, it probably will be. Like I said, most of those piles get burnt. Just never, we just get so busy. That's only gonna. What are you looking at? It all looks square. Right. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take this board and then flip it over, and we'll take our six by sixes from this direction. Okay. The 10 degree blade is so you just lower it. Will you that to speed the blade up? Yeah, all the way. Just, just feel it. Raise it up a little bit when I finish. That way, when I come back to it, if I forget it, yeah. it's gonna be heavy. You know, it's that spring releases all that pressure all at once, and then uh, it's it also destroys your blade. So I found this while you were up the hill because I'm yeah. not letting you do all the grunting. We we'll grab on that end. We'll push, pull it straight to us. Okay. Uh, be careful because I, I, I just rolled one off the other day. We got to get it close enough. Bump it. But watch your legs because if it comes off, it, it about will. there. I'm right, gonna come over a little bit more. Okay, I think we're good. We'll just flip that dude right over. You gonna go away here? It's like I don't want no candle. I don't want no sawmill. 
<laughs> well, by the time, you could already flipped it by the time I put that on there. So we, we went a little bit too far. I'm gonna go over and bump it back. I might, I might can just yank it by hand. Yeah. Chipped it just a little bit, nothing major. Okay. Not bad. Huh? It's on two of them, but not the third well, one. Well, that one's out. Yeah, there's one that's out there. So when you push, you want to put your arms out in front of you, make them a spring. that even flow you, you use your arms as a spring so you, you pull your arms about right here and load them so that way when you're taking your step you can account you can move this and keep that the speed of the saw head the same it's a learned thing it took me a long time to learn it but you yeah. if you just stiff arm it every time you take a step you're pushing so if you, if you hold it right here and push it, it you, you're acting like a buffer and you can keep that you can moderate the speed and keep it moving and then, and then the cut looks better Bucket. Fills up quick. Yeah. That's all good topsoil. All right. Time tight blade or the belt again. Okay. Still stacking these here? Yeah, yeah, we just put them right here for now and then we'll sort them what we're gonna do with them. So I think now we'll take this. I think we need to take, flip this over, take a good couple of boards off of the top of this and leave this six inches this way and then come back and We'll okay. Cook. Yeah, do the best we can. Because you're trying to get that as much quarter sawn as you can. Yeah, as much as the of the pith in the right place. We don't we don't want it in the middle of the log if we can't, or middle of the cut if we can help it. This should just slip over. Tell me something. Just let you do it. 
Like I said, the pith's in it, but for a bench, who cares? Right. Put the, put the pretty side you up. take it off that side, or? Uh, let me just go over that way with it a little bit. I'll come around. I hadn't quite thought that all the way through. Because so <laughs> otherwise yeah. it would be, it would well, be. I can come up every time you're sawing if you, <laughs> yeah. the price is right. Price is right, huh? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Why are you cutting this so thick in here? Well, this is a, like a slab that's not really good for anything. It's with pith in it. So, but we can still make a bench top out of it. See the big, the... Crack? Yeah, it's the pith right here. We still got a little bit of it over here. Actually, most of it's over here, but... On the other end, the pith was a little higher, I think. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The pith wanders. I mean, it's no... No, uh... Oh, yeah. Take the clamp loose. We're there. So, memory serves. Yes, yeah, twelve and a, twelve and a quarter. I mean, twelve and an eighth. So we should come down to six smart and see if it's gonna cut no don't think so well if it was centered in there maybe but that cut would, out for the guard is gonna hit right now it still wouldn't either though because this rail's gonna hit oh yep oh it might it might clear it be really close yeah. Can I just make a water let's do it no we're my six by six right we're here for six by sixes you're let's, gonna let's go ahead and put the small put something behind this to yeah, I've, I've done sacrifice boards before. So, but we don't, we've got the small. And that should move it out. Let's turn them around to the, we got a little small one with a, there's a little small one. Oh. You put, the, yeah, we'll put the, the sharp pointy part. Pretty That's going to clear that guard, I think. Yep. Very close. And I got, I gave myself a little slack over here. So I could go ahead and go up like that and get it for sure. All right. Joy's all yours. Quality gas. It was literally touching that bar, so yeah. maybe just a 
We'll, we'll give it a full. It drag if it wasn't smooth. We'll give it a full eight. It's touching. Huh? I think you've got a drop right here. I think. Oh, it does, don't it? Yeah, that's why it was fitting. Went another inch forward and then hit. make this some sort of uniform is to go ahead and just set this one beside it okay and like I said what we build when we're building the greenhouse is not like I said it's not rocket science in any any form or fashion but if we can go ahead and, and then just come back and cut that well See, it's almost exactly half it's, it's hardly not worth messing with it Especially, you know the most interesting thing to me so far is that that pushed a lot easier. It's the same log, well, it's but thinner, it was though. cutting a lot easier there. Well, because you're only cutting six inches. Uh, yeah. Before that, we're, we're, we're cutting yep. 14 inches. That's a. I was like, is the center of this soft? But no, no, yeah, it's just, obvious answer. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, you can like if you get down to a two by six, uh, that that blade difference is a big deal. I know if you ever want to take an eighth of an inch off it'll do it yeah you clean. can do veneer with it yeah especially if you really That's take a, your time and set it up in like on a, a good solid foundation and, and you can set this thing it'll it'll cut veneer yeah that's a pretty consistent thickness yeah Look, now what we've seen some of that was was hit your leg where the uh the logs got knots you'll see like you said you'll see that little bit of wave up and down that's the blade just never going to cut perfect well, I'm happy with it. Oh yeah. That's... I think we've, I think we've uh, caused more questions than we've answered. <laughs> well, I know more than I did at the start of the day. I don't know. This is a very know. ambitious log to start with. Yeah, it really is. This was a very ambitious log for us to start with. And the only reason we are starting with this is because we need we need six by sixes, which obviously we can't quite get six by six, true six by sixes. Yep. Well, it was a good thing to demonstrate because most of what I have is larger diameter and m mainly what I'm wanting for it is to build something structural, same as you are. Yeah. So. Pole barns and whatever, firewood storage, sawmill shed. Yeah. Yeah, you need a sawmill shed. Any, any other last thoughts, questions that I can probably not know the answer to? <laughs> no, I, I felt like it was... Uh, successful there were a couple little little hiccups but those are what you learn from yeah well and, and two there our, our biggest problem at the beginning of this is i took this out went and washed it at the car wash come back in re-leveled it and there was a few little things i missed so that normally like now we probably the next log we put on there all those are ironed out we'll just go through and 
but that's for the next video. Yep. So we'll, we'll get these moved out of the way and go from there. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this. This is, man, we're just taking it real life. We, we're taking you on this tour. It's his first time working at this sawmill. Uh, what, second time on a sawmill? Yeah. And um, and we moved this sawmill, cleaned it, put it back into place. Now, there's a few hiccups that I caused. We put a new belt on it, which again, that you have to stop and tighten the belt up for the first day, you know, to, as it breaks in. So we had a lot of little hiccups. I think now the next the next time we do the log, I think you'll, you'll it'll, We'll, we'll run a lot faster with it. Well, I really appreciate you taking time to have us here and to show us, show me how to do this. Yeah, just so. let you know, we're not letting him go home for a couple of days. We're, you know, free labor. It's like, hey, you got to, you got to hang out here for a couple of days. So you'll see some more videos with us. Yeah. Free labor. Free labor, huh? Listen, I really appreciate you watching our channel. Uh, I'm, I'm Tony's Tractor Adventure. This is Rock Hill Farm. If you hadn't watched this channel, we really uh, strongly encourage you to watch this channel. It, it does a lot of what we do. Just kind of sometimes he's, he's just better at it than I am. It's really <laughs> he, humiliating, but. He stole my line. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, guys, we appreciate you. God bless. Have a great day. Thanks.